a Restoration Tabernacle experience. A Restoration Tabernacle Experience. weather it was rain at times but we thank god for all in all he gave us a portion of life and health and strength hallelujah it's a good reason to say thank you lord hallelujah the bible clear, declares this is the day that the lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it so we thank god for another night thank god for each and every one that's here tonight Amen. We <clears throat> want you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you right now for this night. We thank you, O oh God, for all of your people in the house tonight, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for this word that you've given us, Lord. We ask you to open up our hearts and understanding. Let us get out the way so that you can have the right of way, God. And let your people be blessed tonight. Let souls be saved, souls be healed, souls be delivered, set free, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, take us down through your word, God, and let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want you to stand for the reading of the word. Amen. It's St. Matthew 6. We're going to start at verse 25. This is a familiar scripture here. If you don't have it, you can read it up on the screen. Amen. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the, the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, 
and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You can just turn to either one of your neighbors, whichever one you're on side of, and just uh, let them know you can have victory over worry tonight. And the first question I'm going to ask you, what, what, how do you describe worry in your own opinion? Anybody got a mic? They can answer. Tranquility. Worry is the absence of peace and tranquility. and tranquility. Amen. It's not going on when you're worrying. Anybody else for worry? Sis? So um, I discovered that I'm a ruminator. You're a what now? A ruminator. Ruminator. <laughs> I'll take that one situation and I'll run it over and over and back and forth and round and round and this could happen and that could happen. So I'm a ruminator. Okay. That's what worry is. Okay. You don't let it go. You don't put it in God's hands. You keep picking it up and picking it up and picking it up and flipping it over. Okay. And double adding yeast. And, and you have more than one situation before it's all over too because you're ruminating quite a bit. Hey Amen. Can you imagine that in a pot? You, you, you're supposed to have one ingredient in there, and you don't put this one, that one, this one, that one. And sometimes you might have more of a mess than you have a, a pot full of nice stuff. Amen. But, you know, I, I tried. I was ruminating, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else for worry? Yes, sir, brother. I don't. I don't think his I don't think his mic is on. Overly concerned for situation. Yes. Overly concerned. That's more than just being concerned. You overly concerned. And and, and you know, uh generally when we go to worrying about things, we have some body language that we usually show. Switching hands, scratching the head. Sometimes we, we, we're walking back and forth. Can't sleep at night, insomnia, worrying. But our Lord and Savior said, worry not. Take no thought. He, he even told us, uh, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, in the world, you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. So tonight, we hope when this lesson is over, whatever you've been worrying about, you'll make up your mind and say, okay, that's, the buck stops right here. No more worries. No more. Because you don't have to. Most of the time when we go to worrying about things, we make it so personal as if nobody knows about it other than you. You know, people sing that song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. But God knows everything that we're going through. And he got somebody out here that done been through some of the things that we're going through. And many times we worry so much because we try to do it all ourselves. And the Lord never meant for us to, to take on all these burdens. If I'm not mistaken, he said, come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden. That means burden down. Those that are worried, he said, and I'll give you rest when you come to Christ. Why? Because you're going to put your, your burdens, your problems in God's hands. When you put it in his hands, guess what? 
He ain't worried no more. You shouldn't be worried no more because he controls everything in the world. We, we got a God on our side, which, is, which he's our spiritual father also. So when you think of him being your father, you really ain't got nothing to worry about. I heard this illustration given about uh, people was on an airplane, and you know how you, you travel on an airplane, and they tell you, put your seatbelt on, and then when things are comfortable, they tell you, unlock your seatbelt, the light flash on. But then when they get ready to run into some turbulent weather, uh, they'll, tell, they'll, they'll flash that light back on, make sure you got your seatbelt on, and you might hit some rocky turbulence to where they say the, the plane can all of a sudden go to rocking like it's going to lose control. It'll take on altitude fast or it'll drop altitude fast. And they said in this particular situation, this little girl was sitting on the seat, and uh, I think, I'm just guessing, a little small child, so somewhere between six and eight, and she was reading a book. While everybody was, you know, howling about the, you know, the turbulence and all, some people was, was a little nervous, they got loud, and, and every now and then you'll hear a scream, and said so the little girl, she looked up, Look back down at that little book she was reading and ain't worried about a thing. So quiet. And the person that was telling the story said, he just had to find out why was this little girl so calm when everything else is going haywire on the plane. So when they got off, say he made sure he caught up to the little girl and said, can I ask you a question, young lady? How come you wasn't upset when the plane was going through turbulence and and it was rocky and everything. So many people was fearful. She said, well, I, I relax all the time because my dad is the pilot of the plane. And so ain't that something about our kids? How when our kids know that we love them, that we always got their best interests at heart? She wasn't worried because daddy probably told her, daddy going to get you home all right. Daddy going to take you here. Daddy gonna, he ain't never failed so kids believe what you tell them. That's why Jesus talked about we ought to have childlike faith. It's not hard to get a child to believe. They believe one minute and they can go on. And the thing I remember so, so much about being a child coming up, we can get in a fight. And get in a fight one minute and hugging and playing the next minute. We forget all about whatever it was we was fighting about. But as grown-ups, some of us can hold them, them, them grudges for years. Some of us can take them to the grave. And that, that's a bad thing to take a grudge to the grave. Hey Amen. Jesus said, if you don't forgive your brother and sister, neither will I forgive you. Hallelujah. So he's telling us tonight we can have victory over this word. And then uh, I want to ask some questions about this worry. Uh, why do you feel like we worry so often? I'd like to hear some input in your personal life, you know? If you can't think of nothing else, think of, think of when things get you down. And when I say worry, that means you try to Deal with stuff that you don't need to deal with. Some things you need to just leave for tomorrow. Anybody got an answer, Sister Emma? Like bills, you know. Okay, bills. Uh, like my kids, you know. Um, what are they going to wear tomorrow? What, how are they going to dress for school tomorrow? Or where is the next thing coming from to okay. eat? Okay. So that's like, for a mom, that's a lot of worry. Yeah. Like, you always got to provide for your child. Okay. So I feel like God always does that for us, but sometimes we don't see it. Mm-hmm. Not right in that moment. Sometimes we have to step for breath that three or four times. Okay. That make a lot of sense. As parents, moms, y'all do it a lot, worrying about them kids and worrying about the bills. 
And uh, I feel like sometimes for the men, I'm speaking for myself, and I, I believe this includes some men, when we know what we got, ain't no need to worry about it. Ain't, ain't nothing going to change it unless God miraculously sent it. So, in other words, I can go to sleep at night. And sometimes my wife, she be maybe tossing and turning, thinking about how you going to pay this bill, you know, instead of giving it to God. The scriptures say, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. And, of course, when you give God your problems, guess what? You're looking for daddy to take care of you, and daddy will take care of you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, first of all. You give your life to the Lord, accept him as your Savior. You baptize, you fill with the Holy Ghost. He is your spiritual daddy. And daddy is going to always look out for his children. Now, we got a lot of children out here in the world don't, ex I mean, I ain't going to say they don't accept him as their daddy, but they don't lean on him like they really believe that he's their daddy. And, and really, that can help a lot of folks that's not saved that come and get saved because it's a lot of people that have lost a uh, mother, father, and they don't have a regular natural parent to lean on. But when you get the Lord is your Savior. You not only got a spiritual brother, you got a spiritual father. And the, and the Bible tells me that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Do, do you actually know what that is saying? That's, big, that's bigger than a whole lot of problems that we could have. If I'm an heir of God, that means we can have whatever our daddy got. Did you know that? And, and daddy got the cow upon a thousand hills. They all belong to him. He's got the whole world in his hand. When he created Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion over the whole earth. So when they sinned, they lost a lot of, they lost a lot of their inheritance. But they didn't lose that dominion. And the same Blessings that came down on Adam and Eve, it come down on our way, except that it comes in a better light because we got a better covenant now with the Lord. They call it the new covenant. And that's saying that we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And, of course, Christ, even when he left the scene, y'all, uh, when he told the disciples, before he ascended up back up to heaven, he said, the works that I do, greater will be the works that you'll do. But now, in order for those works to, ha to take place, we got to believe God, and we got to cast all our cares upon him. And we got to stop worrying about tomorrow. Give me one main reason why you feel like he tell us not to worry about tomorrow. One main reason, y'all. Go ahead. He already took care of it. He already took care of it. That's one reason. That's by faith. He already took care of your problem. Somebody else want to throw one in? Why he tell you don't worry about tomorrow? This. When we focus more on us and our feelings, we can miss him in the situation. Amen. Say that again. When we're more focused on us and our feelings, we can miss him in the situation. Okay. See, we don't need to be self-centered. We need to focus on God and not on us. It's another reason, too. Don't worry about tomorrow. It, it, it's pretty simple when I bring it out. Anybody got a anybody got a guarantee they'll be here to see tomorrow? Huh? I'm gonna make it even more plainer. You ain't got no guarantee. Why? 
All right, tomorrow is not promised. And then you could be stretched out tomorrow and don't even wake up and see tomorrow. So since that could be the case, what's the sense of worrying about it? You may not even be here to see it. And then I like what uh, the other one said, it's not promised to us. He tell us the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. This day. We got enough troubles in this day. He don't want us worrying about the past because that's already gone. Good or bad, that's already gone. He, he don't want us worrying about tomorrow because that ain't guaranteed. And if it does come, it's enough problems in tomorrow to take care of itself. He says sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. So why worry about something that you can't even deal with anyhow? You got something, sis? And I know often for a lot of us humans, we don't stop at worrying. Okay. A lot of times when we start worrying, then we start trying to move and do stuff to try to impact that. God didn't, God didn't ask you to do that. Mm. He didn't ask you to move on that. Okay. You got ahead of him and okay. started doing things you didn't have any business doing, and then we wonder why we get the results we get. All right. So we don't need to try to manipulate his plan. Amen. We need to walk in his plan. Yes. And do what he's calling us to do in it. Hallelujah. That's, that's why uh, Proverbs, I think it's 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You can't get it no better than having God directing your path. I'll tell you the truth. Sometimes he, 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 he might have us walking a long ways, but guess what? Even when you get weary, you get weary to the point that you feel like you can't make it. Don't you know he got the power and the ability to t pick you up and carry you? That's what the footprints is all about. Pick you up and carry you when you're at your weakest because he's faithful. Our God is so faithful the scriptures say he's not going to put more on us than we can bear. So sometimes, do you ever think like this? Sometimes when you got, a, you got this multitude of problems, I mean, it went from a molehill to a mountain. And ain't no way you can even get your mind around some of the problems that you worrying about. And some of them, believe it or not, will never come to pass. Because you worrying, you stressing. Worrying is, 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 is both natural and supernatural as far as bringing on some problems in your life. I like what Minister Danny said. You be so carried away with yourself, you miss God and miss his plan for you. The very answers that God could have for us, we in such a hurry to get it together that we pick up the ball and start running. And, and the Lord say, I, I, I didn't tell you to touch the ball now. I just told you to watch me. I'm going to show you when to pick the ball up. But, you know, we get, at, we get that anxiety, that wariness, and, you know, and we'll pick that ball up and start running with it. Sometimes we, sometime if we ain't careful, we'll run in the wrong direction. I, I think of Jonah. <laughs> I still dealt with him. I think of him. He did go in the wrong direction there. God told him which, which way to go. And Jonah said, uh-uh. I, I ain't going to do it. He just, he just made up his mind he going another way. But, ain't, 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 but see, we serve, we serve such a loving and faithful God until he already know you're going to mess up when I tell him. I know he ain't going that way. That's why I got another way out of this situation. I, I already got a fish prepared. And I like the way Apostle broke that down. He commanded the fish. I ain't never heard nobody deal with the fish 
but that's going to make me deal with him in the future because that fish was right on point. <laughs> and then the fish obeying him, but it wasn't at the fish's delight now. He got, he got a hole this man in his, <laughs> in his stomach and can't regurgitate till the time comes. <laughs> you know, oh, man. That's, now, that's some temptation, and then it's some trial and test that the fish had to deal with. And, and then on top of it, I believe the fish took him all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. And you know something? I didn't hear nothing about the fish coming up for air either. Did y'all know that whales every so often got to come up for air? But this was God made, this was a God made supernatural whale that God said, I'm going to leave you down here for three days and nights. You ain't got to worry about no air. I'll take care of the air. Why? Because I am your every need. I am whatever it is that you need, I am. So he sustained that, that, that well. He wasn't hungry. He wasn't eating anything. Plus, he wasn't breathing as far as coming up to get some air. So he was, he was taking in God's air. That's what he was doing. Taking in supernatural, which is we can't understand supernatural. It's far beyond our imagination. But this is what the world of faith is all about. There's one scripture that says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so, it's bad enough to to want to do things on your own, and then it's, 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 it's worse that, you, you know, you attempt to do it and ignore God, and then you got to come right back to God when it's all messed up to get some help how to get this thing straight. God has a lot of patience. And all the things that God deal with with us, he want us to learn how to deal with with our brothers and sisters. And what I mean by that, he allows patience to come into place when we are hard-headed and difficult. And so sometimes family members can be hard-headed and difficult. He want us to show the same type of faith and patience and love that he did for us. Because if God hadn't waited patiently on a lot of us and, and, and really worked with us, a lot of us wouldn't even be here today. So I thank God every time I think about how good God was in my life. That's, that song said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. So worry is one of the things that he's trying to get us to just take out of the vocabulary. From time to time, we still will do it. Don't get me wrong, because we're human. But if we think on God's word, there's no need for us to be worrying. Because we serve a God that's got all the answers. I'm going to tell us, uh, break down five aspects of worrying and how we get the complete victory over it. The clue, actually, the complete victory, before we even get into it, is your faith in God, your trust in God. And we'll, and we'll break that down, make that make a little bit more sense. You say, well, I got faith in God. How do I, tr how do I trust him? We're going to break it down. The first thing about worry is that worry is inconsistent. And Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, not, nor the life, is the life, not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Worry is inconsistent in the, in the sense that Worry won't get you nowhere. Worry will make you feel like you can figure it out yourself, but it's lying to you all the time. But when you got faith, guess what? Faith will cause you to look to God. Faith will cause you to submit yourself 
unto God. As you submit yourself unto God, and, and, and over in Philippians, the third chapter, let's go over there right quick. Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So he's telling us right there. Don't be careful for nothing. Don't be worried. Don't be frustrated. Don't be anxious about anything. But take all of your problems to the Lord. And see, once we take those problems and burdens to God, then he allows us or tells us sometime, now go on to sleep. I got everything under control. While you sleeping, God is working your situation out. You can't see it. You might wake up feeling the same way, but if God tell you it's taken care of, you can, you, you can take that to the bank. It's all right. Because you've given that problem to God, you ain't worrying about it no more. And do you not know it takes faith when you come to God to, to accept him as your Savior? You're asking Christ to be the Lord of your life, to take care of you for the rest of your life. And sometimes we make that uh, proclamation before the saints, before the people of God and what have you, publicly. And the next day we wake up, we write back to our own soul's business as far as the gender. You know what I'm saying? We still hanging with the same homies. We still going to the same places. We still doing the same things. But we saying, I'm saved. I gave my life to the Lord. But well, see, we don't understand that a uh, transformation has to take place and a process. And, and this is what gets me. I, I talk to a few folk here and there, and, you know, they'll say, well, I'm, I'm serving God, but I don't need to go to church. You know, I don't need no church home. God, Christ is in me. He's everywhere, you know. And it gets me how that they feel like they can proclaim how much they serve in God and they're so saved, but they don't want to be in God's house where they can testify, where they can praise God, where they can get the spiritual help that they need, the nutrition for their body and their soul. That, 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 that's just like walking around. And, and there's nothing wrong if you're walking around and you never need a doctor. But I know many of people said, no, I don't go to no doctors because I ain't got no problems. Let some pain hit your body. You're going to want to know what's causing that pain. And a lot of times, you got to go to a doctor to find out what the deal is. So ain't no need of saying, I don't need him. I mean, it's better to say, I'd rather not go to him. You know, I can trust God. But if I get sick, ain't it ain't as good that a doctor is available? And then since... Uh, folks feel like they don't need a doctor. Why did Jesus pick one of his disciples that was a doctor? And don't, and don't y'all think that Luke never done nothing. He was with Jesus for a reason. Somebody bust their foot or, 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 or got splinters or whatever. Luke was right there to work on situations. You don't hear accounts of Luke. Why? Because Jesus was doing all the big miracles. Maybe he was doing some little miracles. But he had him as a physician. And then, why did Jesus get a tax collector? He had to get somebody knowing how to deal with money. And then, of course, he knew that Judas was going to be stealing. He got him in there, too. So, Jesus had a purpose in every one that he picked. And it's like 
he takes some of the worstest folks because he see the good inside them and bring the best out of them. And, and I'm sure a lot of us probably got that as some of our testimony. For all that I have been through, the Lord have helped bring the best out of me. Since I've been saved, I have seen a lot of changes in my life for the good. And the bad things that I have dealt with, the Lord helped me to see. I don't have to do it no more. Especially if I was trying to figure it out by myself and worry and be all frustrated. Somebody said earlier, I think worry is the absence of peace, was it? Okay, don't you know when you don't have no peace, you will be frustrated. And you'll be going through some tests and some trials. But ain't it a blessing when you got that peace that when you out there in traffic and somebody pull off in front of you and slap on brakes almost hit you, that you got some peace that you can say, Jesus, before we had that peace, we were cussing, saying a whole lot of bad words. But now that we got the Lord, we can say, Jesus, help them. Turn them around, Lord. Have mercy upon them. Our whole conversation changes when we take on the Lord in our life. We got a whole new, we got a whole new conversation. Okay, here's another one about worrying. Worrying is irrational. And I read that scripture for you about Philippians where be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God. When, when, when something is irrational, it don't seem like it makes sense. Uh, Lord, I'm doing what you say. I'm praying. You, you, you told me to have faith. And the man that had, that was, uh, he was blind. The Lord spit in his eyes. Now, that was irrational to that man. He had no bit of spitting in his eye. And, and, and some of y'all would have said, no, 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 Jesus, you ain't spitting in mine. Spit in my eye, I'm a hawk and spit in yours. But you see, after he done spit in the man's eyes, he said, now go wash down at the, at the river. And the man was just as faithful to go do just what he said. And his miracle was in his obedience and his faithfulness. So a lot of times when we weren't, all kind of crazy stuff come to us about what we should or what we shouldn't be doing. And then sometimes, don't y'all find this to be true? You ain't got to raise your hand or anything. Sometimes when we worried about something, especially bills, tell the truth about it. Be true to yourself. Don't sometimes we run to every person that we think can solve our problem except for God? We leave God out of the program, and he is the one that's in charge of the program. He is the one that can tell you where the answer is. Don't you know most of the time when you run to folks to try to get the help, you get a whole lot of, I can't do it. I don't have it. But if God tells you, go to brother, sister, so-and-so, guess what? They got it, and they going to give it up, and you ain't going to have no problems either. Why? Because you waited on God. You allow God to intervene and show you what to do. All right. Number three, worrying is ineffective. Worrying never accomplishes anything. Worrying gets you more worried. Worrying, say that, sis. All right. Worrying to get you physically sick. You get to worrying long enough. Some of, some of y'all might fall out in here right now, and we had to get you to the ambulance and get you down to the hospital. Worrying, man. But, he, that, but like I say, going back to uh, verse 27, he said, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? 
you, you can't change nothing about your identity. Where we was born, uh, where, we, where we lived, where we went to school and all, we can't change none of that. It's already in print. Now, we can change where we're going now in our present. All of the things in the past, it's already done, good or bad. But we can make a big difference in the things that we choose now and the, the decisions that we make now and do it in righteousness, do it in faith, do it in, in God guiding you. It'll make our future way much better than our past work. Because God is not going to guide us in a bad way. He's not going to guide us to a bad destination. And God sees all of the pitfalls that we're going to experience before we get to those places. Okay. Y'all know we got GPA for our car, and which that's a nice thing. But do you know sometimes them GPAs get it wrong? Sometimes them GPA, I have been following a GPA and sent me down the wrong street. And I went down there and was just as lost in the GPA didn't help me to get back to where I needed to be. I said, okay, GPA, I'm going to put you to the side right now. And I had to get myself to where I needed to go, all because sometimes they have new things put into the communities, and the GPA ain't learned that. But what I'm trying to say, the GPA, as good as it is, it's got flaws. But guess what, church? We serve a God that ain't got no flaws. We got, we, man, we serve a God that ain't even got a GPA. Don't need no GPA because he is the GPA. Hallelujah. If you lost and you call on Jesus, Jesus can get you out of the worst mess. I don't care how lost you are. I don't care how confused you are. God can take you up and turn you around. Like the song said, he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Now, that's what the Lord can do for us. No GPA, church. God ain't worried about the telephone. We can call Jesus up anytime, 24 hours a day. He ain't got no certain time you're going to call him. He ain't got no voicemail going to tell you to wait. So-and-so can't be here right now, but he'll get back to you. No, some of us been, would have been dead if Christ hadn't came to our rescue in the past. But Christ, the scripture said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. See, God knows the trouble that you're going to get into, and God is already there before you get there and going to be in the trouble with you. Man, who wouldn't serve a God like that now? I'm telling you, we took our time coming to God. Believe me, we ran and ran and did our thing, so to speak. But once we really got the gist of what this thing mean, ain't no more running now. Lord, I take my time and safely walk with you, trusting you for every step of the way. Every step, man, because it's a faithful step. The, the scripture said the steps of the Lord. He orders our steps. Hallelujah. And the, and, and the way of the Lord is certain. The steps of the Lord are sure. The scripture says he's a, he's a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Even in darkness, you don't have to fear, church, because God is out there in the darkness. Sometime now we can be out somewhere and we can be in a dark place and we can see a shadow. And the shadow can scare us, but that ain't nothing but a shadow. But God, he's right there watching over us. Now, I'm, I'm being real. For, and there's so many uh, kids growing up without fathers and mothers today for different reasons. But God will take care of you. I'm telling you, he, he's, he stick closer, the Bible said, than any brother. And then he is your mother. He's better than your mother, your father, your sister, or brother. One time, y'all remember Jesus was working about his business, and they banged on the door and said, Lord, your mother and brothers are out here. They want to see you. And he asked the question, who is my mother and my brother but he that doeth the will of my father? 
That's who my mother and my brother is. Now, you know, when I begin to hear those scriptures minister, that said something to me that uh, the precious blood of Jesus is thicker than this blood that we got for, for natural relatives. Our spiritual family is greater than our natural family. We may not want to say that, but that's the truth. I have had more saints of God bail me out of problems and pray with me and talk to me and give me encouragement than a many of my family. They couldn't do nothing, but uh, I, I, I hope things get better for you. Yeah, they'll, they'll tell me they're praying, but that's about all they could do. But I've had brothers and sisters in the house of God. Oh, Lord, ain't I mean, you know, they just have done some miracles in my life. The encouraging words, the prayers, to let you know I'm, I'm with you and I'm praying for you and I'm not giving up on you. That's a good feeling, knowing that you ain't got it yourself together and somebody is praying for you. Say, number four, worry is illogical. Come on. Okay, deaconess. No. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so my question is, can you pray for peace and how? And the reason why I ask it like that is because I know we, um, we've been taught, you know, sometimes when we pray for strength or we pray for um, patience, that it adds, you know, more trials. Yeah. So, right. So, is that, like, I feel like I know the answer, but I need, I, I just need clarity. Okay. Is Is that the same thing when you pray for peace because I'm asking because I struggle 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 with worry okay. and I know even when I have conversations and I talk it out with the Lord and and, and, and I, I believe I've given it to him yeah. but I end up picking it back up again and I'm still worrying so and I've learned tonight that it's because I'm not at peace okay at giving it to God so how do I pray for peace okay uh this is one way I know that you can pray for peace. And anybody else that want to help, uh, you jump right on in. The Lord been dealing with me lately about uh, praying and getting things from God. Why I haven't gotten certain things from God and why I didn't have peace also. And peace was a big reason why certain things weren't happening. Because I was, like you, sis, I was worrying after I done prayed and gave it to the Lord. I'm wondering, is this going to happen? And I'm talking to other people. Uh, well, you know, I done gave this to God, but I don't know. You see, the scriptures say you don't want to be double-minded because a double-minded person, that's one minute they praying, talking faith. The next minute, they all on shaky, not knowing what they should be doing next. And they still worried. Well, the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and the Bible said that person shouldn't think they're going to receive anything from the Lord. So how the Lord began to help me to, to get more peace, I like, uh, and it's been in the Bible all the time. I just never took it to heart the way he dealt with me about it. St. Mark 11 and 22, where he tells you to have faith in God, and he tells you how that if you got faith as the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and command it to, to be moved, and it'll move. But this is the part that got me in uh, 11 and 24 says, when you stand praying, believe that you receive the things that you pray for, and you shall have them. And so that means, for example, praying for peace. Okay, God, I, I need peace in, in the midst of my problems. I need peace for the dealing with my family, Lord. I got a lot of bills, Lord. I feel this stress on me, God, and I need to stop this worrying. So I'm praying that your peace would come over me and flood my soul. So now, after me praying, 
I stopped uh, praying for that anymore. I just began to thank God for the answer. Thank God for you giving me peace, Lord. Thank God for you uh, touching my mind, touching my heart, my spirit. So if I say anything about my situation, I'm going to be talking positive and not negative. I thank God for the peace that he's given me. I may still feel the same, but I'm declaring by faith, and Romans 4 and 17 says we need to call those things that be not as though they were. You seeking this peace, you don't have it yet, but you thanking God in advance for this peace. And then it seems like the more you thank God, the Bible said God inherits the praises of his people. And so it's like you're saying to God, say, Lord, I'm thanking you for this peace because I've been in torment with this, with this worrying and, and, and what have you. That hasn't been good, but I thank you that I don't have to worry. I don't have to be in strife any longer. So that means that, to me, you're not going to deal with this anymore as far as, Lord, I just can't get it together. I'm still struggling. I'm thanking God until it manifests. Sometimes it will manifest very fast. It, 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 it seems like it's, it's according to how serious you want it in your spirit. Like sometimes you can get on your knees and say, God, I got to pray. I got to get this answer tonight, and I'm not leaving here until you bless me. And like it's like when God tell you after you begin to thank him, daughter, it's yours. It's like he'll put a assurance in your spirit, it's yours. And then whatever it was that was giving you that stress, all of a sudden it done stopped. You may not know when it stopped, but it done stopped. Any, does anybody else care to add to that as far as uh, helping her? Uh, she asked the question about, Praying for peace. Is it possible for you to pray to pray for peace and get the peace that you need? Okay, brother, let's hear your hear your answer. It has to come from your heart. You have to mean it. You have to have the faith. I don't like to speak talk about it. Yeah. But I was shot in Vietnam. Okay. I was laying there bleeding, and I said, God, please help me. Yes. I will do better. Yes. Not another bullet hit me, and they got me out of there. Yeah. That's having the faith that he's going to take care of you. Amen. All right. He, he said a good, a good part, believing this thing in your heart. See, like I say, when it, when, it, when, it, when it gets so serious that you've got to get an answer, it's like you even pray with more persistency. You know he's going to do it. Now, this is where faith starts really getting elevated. Apostle? Okay. So, I, we've talked a lot about faith. Yes. But the question is peace. Okay. So, you touched on it earlier when you said, in Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Yes. And we all know this. It should be the most. You will not have peace. He said that he will keep you in perfect peace Amen. if your mind is stayed on him. That's yes. prayer. Yes. If I am meditating on him, that's prayer. Amen. That's how you pray for peace. The word says it. Yes. Did, did, that, did that help you a whole lot better, sis? Yeah. Yes. 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 I understand. Yeah, you need this peace. And I like, you, you want to say something else, Paul? Yes. Um, we have to understand that with worry, worry progressively leads the other to other things. You know, I think when Deaconess was talking about uh, she was trying to think of, about uh, her question, and she said about uh, the fact that 
she was trying to think of what it was, and she, and then she was meaning patience. Yes. You know, with patience, it worked with trials, it worked with tribulation, that sort of thing. So we got to understand that worry worketh something. So yes. worry worketh anxiety. Mm-hmm. Worry Ooh. worketh depression. Amen. So when you have worry, the enemy uses that to fill your mind with thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Those things then make you have anxiety. Those things then make you have depression. So what happens then is, yes, it's hard for you to try to just pull out of that and say, I'm going to keep my mind on the Lord. So what you have to do is rebuke the devourer during those times. You might take more time rebuking the devil than you do keeping your mind on him. But whatever it takes so that now you can push him back and get to the place where you can keep your mind on him. Because that's all that is, the enemy in your mind. So you got to be able to, I mean, you can't, and I'm I'm going to liken it to a game, even though we know it is not a game. Okay? You can't win any sports game that is a team sport without defense. That's it. You can't, uh, we, we can't paint a picture that this is all offense. That, oh, you know, just read your Bible. Just do this. Just do that. This, the church has been preaching that forever. Yep. Where's the defense? You gotta be, you gotta be on defense first. Back the opponent up before you can take the jumper. Amen. You gotta have defense. You gotta have a line before you can throw the before you can throw the touchdown. Yes. You gotta have a blocker to get into the end zone. Yes. You gotta be on defense first. Back that devourer up. Get him out of your mind. Amen. Then focus on those things of God. So that now you can be led to perfect peace. Yes. We all go through hell if we are a child of God. Amen. Especially. But that devil, that's what he wants. He wants to get in your mind so he can destroy you because that's the only thing he can touch on you. Physically. So first thing. Your first tactic should be defense. When he's in your mind telling you those crazy things, jump. If you can't drop to your knees, walk around whispering a prayer. Throw on some headphones, listening to, to some word. Throw on some headphones, listening to some gospel music. Put up your defense first. And then once that, that, that spirit is gone, now I'm going to focus on God. And the more you focus, he, his word is true. We can't lie. So he said, if you are meditating on me, you're going to be in perfect peace. But it's hard to meditate on him when the devil in your brain. Yes, Lord. So you got to go in defense first. Get that stuff up out of there. Push it back. Put it under your feet. Get rid of it. So now I can focus on these things. Okay? So it's a two-part tactic. Yeah, we preach often. We preach one part and never preach the other. Yes. But you got to go on defense first. Amen. That's the life we live in, especially now. As Christians, we got to be on defense. It's, it's a scripture, I believe it's over in 2 Corinthians, where it says, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so that's another thing you can do when you you trying to get this peace and you struggling with it. First thing you can say, you, you know it's coming from Satan. It ain't coming from you. It ain't coming from God. It's coming from Satan. You can say, I don't know about you, Satan. You're going to get out of, out of here tonight. I, I need my peace, and I can't have it if I'm fooling with you. And you can tell him, get out. You can, you can do like that lady on War Room. Go to your door and open up your door and say, get out of my house. You know, in other words, you're speaking authority, and you're speaking from the word of God. Jesus got Satan out of his house every time when Satan was talking stuff to him in the wilderness. He said, it is written. And you can, and we can say the same thing. It is written. If I keep my mind stayed on Jesus, he's going to give me perfect peace. If I cast all my cares upon him, he's going to give me perfect peace. And, and, and actually, see, after you, do, after you speak these things, the peace is coming because you trust in God to back you up. Everything that we say about God in the scriptures, God will back us up. 
But then God knows if we just saying it just because it sounds good. No, you ain't getting the backup just because it sounds good. You getting the backup because, hey, I mean what I say, Satan. You know, you can talk with authority. And God give us that authority. But you believe in that thing down in your heart. I got the victory. And I ain't going out like this. I'm going out in peace. And the more you start believing that thing and speaking that thing, that peace starts rolling up in you. I'm telling you, the Bible says it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It'll comfort your heart. And it'll guard your mind. Hallelujah. The last aspect of worry, it's irresponsible. Worry, worry, you can't count on worry. It, it, it ain't got no integrity. It, it, it ain't got no truth in it. Worry, worry is a big old bunch of lies and fear. It's got a whole lot of things. And, and like, I like the way Apostle said, it worketh. Worry will work if fear. It'll work if uh, defeat in your body. It'll work sickness in your body, sickness in your mind. Many people that have had uh, uh, nervous breakdowns was because of a whole lot of worry. But once the Lord delivered those same folk and they know that it was God, they'll tell you every time worry come, I'm putting God on him because I ain't got time for that. I ain't going back to that weak state no more. And we don't have to once we learn the power of God that resides in us. You got something, sis? All right. Um, wow, this is, man. Um, I, I think something I wanted to add, um, because I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a ruminator. Um, and I can think of a season where um, when I was pregnant with, um, I was pregnant with Justice. And the doctor called me on my phone and, and told me this crazy cockamamie thing um, that I know the devil intended to send me straight into worry, mm -hmm. straight into a panic attack, straight into anxiety. And um, it was so wicked and it was so mean, I actually got mad with the doctor. Like, I got mad. I got mad about the attack that he sent. And because, um, you know, what the doctor said, it was inappropriate. It's, some, it's something you should never tell a pregnant woman when she's alone. You should have called her into the office. Just all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and hopefully this will help deepen this. Um, it, it was of the magnitude that I went to Apostle and Pastor Davis and said, can you pray with us? Can, can you stand in the gap with us? Yeah. Because I didn't want to worry. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be to the place where it was overcoming and, you know, I'm in the middle of the night worried about this thing because they said this and they said that. Um, and as I'm listening to this conversation, I think there's even times where there's situations where you need your brothers and sisters to, to go to bat with you, to go in prayer with you Amen. because the situation is so big and, and there's so many places where the devil wants to attack. That, that's where we should link up. Yeah. And, and so we can have perfect peace together. You pray for me, help me, I'm praying for you. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah. Amen. That is real good. Minister Danny? And I just wanted to add, so I have been, of late, <laughs> stressing about a whole lot. Um, a lot of people don't understand, you know, I want to fix it. I want to help. I yes. want to, you know, for me, I feel like I have to overdo it to get them to understand how much I love them. Yes. To get them to understand I'm here, I'm supporting you. But when I sat back and I realized all the weight that was on me, it was unhealthy. Um, Amen. Nobody knew except maybe Apostle and a couple other people. I had been having chest pains for months. Mm. Chest pains. Every day. Constantly. Jeez the weight, the heaviness, my heart's palpitating, I'm feeling like I can't breathe. And, but meanwhile, I'm still serving, I'm still doing everything I'm supposed to do. But nobody knew. I go to the doctor, they do the stress test, they hook me up, they, you know, they doing the, the halter monitor and all that stuff, did all of that. Doctor came in the room and said, 
Ms. Burgess, there is nothing wrong with you. All right. There is nothing wrong with you. Your heart is perfect. Mm. My heart is perfect. But he said, the stress on you is is too much. Yes. He's like, first of all, you know, you stress, and I'm a stress eater. He knows I eat. <laughs> so that's not helping anything. And then I'm just continuing to carry it. So when we do that, it does manifest physically. You yes. know, I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't eating the right stuff. I wasn't, you know, I'm tossing and turning through the middle of the night because all this stuff is on my mind. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, I sit there and I think about it. Yes. It's not healthy. We all, and it, I thank God for the people that said, sis, you can't do this. Like, you need to find some outlets for you. What do you do for you outside of helping other people? Amen. So we all have to understand that, yes, stressful things happen, but it's how you handle it. Do you allow it to consume you, or are you yielding it to Christ and, and allowing him to take that from you? Because it's something I need to be better about. And I yes. can be honest and transparent. I'm not, I haven't been good at that. But I understand that it's, it's not selfish to care about your well-being. Amen. And I'm learning that. It's, Amen. It's not selfish to care about you growing and, and being healthy. That's a good thing. And God wants us to do that. Amen. Because we can't lead others if we're not, you know, truly following his word and doing what he's calling us to do. How can I tell you, you know, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. If I'm over here leaning upon my own understanding and drive myself crazy. Yes. Amen. So, that's a good one. And just like apostles say, it ain't all offense. You got to, you got to back that joker up. You got some, some defense too. <laughs> Amen. And I was in your situation a, a while back uh, when I was living down in Tennessee, and I was stressed out too, sister. And I was having chest pains during that time, and thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown and went to a psychiatrist and a therapist. And they both said, if you don't get from up under the stress that you up under, you're going to have a heart attack or a major stroke. And that scared the life out of me, so to speak. And it, it, it helped me to see I got to get out of this picture. I got to change this picture. And it took a while, but I began to pray and give that thing to God. And I kept kept my heart and mind toward getting set free, getting deliverance. And a lot of things I just stopped doing that would have me stressing that I knowed of, you know. And so, and I was going through the, 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 the uh, manifestation of not sleeping, having insomnia, and then eating like crazy and carrying on. And that wasn't good at all. But thank God, as God began to give me the deliverance, and, you know, and brought me up this way, so much stress was taken off of me instantly. And uh, my mind, like I said, made up, I ain't going back there. And so every time Satan tries to take me there, I will rebuke him, either by word, scripture, or I will do like apostle, put some headphones on, get me some scriptures going, get me a preacher going. I know what it takes to, to, to bring my peace when I need it, you know. And sometimes it ain't the same for all of us. Some of us can just get on our knees and, and scream and cry out and get it. And others, it, it don't come the same way. And But whatever way it comes for you, you have to do it. If it's going to bring your sanity, you need to do it. I'm telling you. And it works when you really cry out to God. Draw now unto God, and he will draw now unto you. And so, that last one I was just speaking of about worry is irresponsible. You can't depend on worry. So why depend on worry? Depend on your peace of God. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So no matter what you're going through tonight, commit your ways unto the Lord. Matter of fact, uh, I believe it was Elder Bernie said that in the Bible uh, lesson or even 
or it might have been apostle, hear the whole conclusion of the matter, fear God and keep his commandments, because this is the whole duty of man. God's going to bring everything in the judgment, whether it be good or bad. So, like I said, sometimes the devil will have us worrying about what we've done wrong to somebody. We don't, we don't ask for forgiveness, and he's still beating our mind up with that. We got to let that stuff go. And, and, and sometimes, people, you know, uh, you, you might say, well, pray for me, uh, Apostle. Uh, I'm still uh, upset with somebody. Well, how long you been upset with them? Oh, about 30 years. 30 years? You ain't got over that yet? The devil will keep you on a guilt trip, church. He will keep you on a guilt trip. The longer he keep you on a guilt trip, that's the longer you ain't got no deliverance. And that, 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 that worrying, that fear is steady working something else. And don't let them be dead and gone, man. <laughs> I, I heard this true testimony one of my uh, preachers, when I was pastor in the church, he went to visit a woman in the hospital, had terminal cancer, and he told her what the Lord said, God will raise her up and heal her if she will forgive her husband for what he had done. The lady act like she didn't hear him at first. He told her a second time, and she had the nerve to tell him, I can't forgive him. I don't know what he done to her, but I can't forgive him. And she's going to end up dying in her sins like that. Because she didn't live but a couple of weeks after that. But the Lord said he would raise her up and heal her if she would forgive him. Don't let nobody send your soul to hell. I don't care how much they done done to you wrong. If they ask for forgiveness, you forgive them. Because you think sometimes because I don't forgive them, I'm hurting them. No, you ain't. They out there doing everything they want to do. And you the one suffering because you carrying that burden which you can't get no deliverance, can't get no peace. You're all frustrated. But once you say, Lord, I forgive them, hey, man, God can deal with them then. And he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So we don't have to worry about being mistreated. Just put it all under the blood and move on with your life. Any, anybody have a question? Uh, or a statement they want to make before we uh, make the altar call? Amen. That's a good one. That's one of my models. Let go and let God. See, that right there is a cure for word. Let go and let God. Because God going to do his thing, but he need us to let him do his thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If there's no one else, amen, we thank God, amen, for this word tonight on we can have the victory over worry tonight. There's no such thing as us got to, we got to carry worry on until our dying days. No, we don't. The devil would love you to think that because he will press on to try to take you out. You, we give the devil privilege when we allow worry to stay in our lives. But when we make up our mind, we're going to trust God, let go and let God, God can have his way in our life. Amen. Uh, by way of Radio Land, you that's watching us tonight by YouTube, amen, or TV, amen. If you don't have that peace that we talked about earlier that God wants to bless your life with, you can have it tonight if you would just repent. Amen. Just repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name. God, I'm sorry for the life that I have lived. I'm sorry for living outside of your will, God. But God, after hearing the word tonight, I want to have a change of heart. Lord, I believe that Jesus died and he bled and he suffered and then he was buried and he rose on the third day. And Lord, I believe that he died to forgive me of all of my sins. So Lord, I commit those sins to Jesus and I'm trusting that he will save my soul and turn my life around. Give me the strength to live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you uh, repeated that prayer by your act of faith, hallelujah, and your confidence in God, the Bible says you are saved. Amen. And 
you need to go on and continue in your salvation by getting in a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. So if you like Al's, give us a call. Our number is up on the screen, amen, in a few minutes. And let us know how you are doing and that you would like to turn your life around, amen. And if it's not our tab, it's many other churches. Let God guide you and lead you to the right place, amen, and you'll be blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you again tonight for this word. I hope and pray that we were educated tonight on living in victory over worry. Hallelujah. And it's just as simple as letting go and letting God. Amen. So, again, we thank God for the service, and we're going to turn the rest, remainder of the service in the hand of Minister Danny for the offering. Praise the Lord. If this is your first time giving with Restoration Tabernacle online, please follow these step-by-step -step instructions. Step 1. Log on to our website www.rtab613.com Step 2. Scroll down to the bottom of your screen and click on the Donate Now button. Step 3. Type in the dollar amount you are giving and click on the Donate button. Step 4. You will be brought to our square checkout screen. Confirm the amount and click on the checkout button. Step 5. Fill in your details and click next. Step 6. Enter your payment information and click next. Step 7. Review the information and click place order. Step 8. Once your order is complete, you will see a confirmation screen. Please contact Deaconess Melinda Sevis at 410-618-9024 after you have donated to receive proper credit. Thank you for choosing to worship with Restoration Tabernacle. We pray you enjoy the rest Thank of your day. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to worship with us in person, our address is 7 Pleasant View Church Road, Port Deposit, Maryland, 21904. Sunday morning worship is at 11 a.m. For more information about our other services, please visit www.rtab613.com. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss our upcoming events, newest messages, and more.